It was in 1980 and 1981 that the Voyagers passed Saturn and gave us the first substantial hints that there was something truly amazing going on out there. In particular, something peculiar was going on with a moon so small it might have been mistaken for insignificant. That moon is Enceladus. Enceladus was already noted to be the most reflective object in the solar system. And even back in the Voyager days, way back in the early 1980s, it had been revealed why. Its surface is almost entirely composed of clean ice, making Enceladus, at least at the surface, a bright white ice ball. It was also situated right in the middle of Saturn's E-ring, the outermost major ring. And for both these reasons, Enceladus was something of a curiosity, but not enough to hallmark it for any special observation. But regardless of Enceladus' status, Saturn itself is a very interesting solar system object, the second largest gas giant in our solar system. It possesses gigantic, majestic rings, and is orbited by the only major moon in the solar system with a substantial atmosphere, Titan. And thus, NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency came together for a joint venture of exploration and launched the Cassini probe. Cassini launched on October 15, 1997, and began a multi-year journey across billions of kilometers, until it was finally captured by Saturn's gravity, where it would begin its mission of observation, spanning many years and hundreds of orbits, and teaching us almost everything we now know about the Saturnian system. But of all the things Cassini has revealed about Saturn, Enceladus is definitely its most surprising. While the Cassini probe had been intended to have a peek at many of Saturn's moons, Enceladus became a subject of intense interest when it was observed that it created unusual perturbations in Saturn's magnetic field, perturbations that could only be reasonably explained by having a subterranean ocean. So Cassini received directions to make a targeted flyby, and the closer it drew to the little white moon, the more amazing and spectacular became the data and the imagery that Cassini revealed. Cassini immediately showed Enceladus to be much more than a 500 kilometer in diameter ice ball. Its surface was quite smooth, indicating significant geological activity, activity sufficient to perpetually renew the surface. Two passes of the Cassini orbiter revealed something like cometary jets coming off its south pole. But it was the third pass that was scientific pay dirt. Jets of water, geysers, were erupting from Cassini's south pole at 400 meters per second. Enceladus occupies the middle of Saturn's E-ring because it makes the E-ring. And what's more, yet another pass of Cassini revealed that the material emitted by these geysers was filled with organic components and silicates that could only form inside a warm ocean. This was one of the most exciting astronomical discoveries in scientific history. A world, a very small world, with a warm ocean and further studies revealed that this ocean very likely has hydrothermal vents, creating an energy gradient. Little Enceladus contained all the ingredients necessary for life. Minerals, organic compounds, water, access to a terrestrial surface under the icy shell, and an energy gradient. And data indicated this environment had been stable for tens of millions of years. Like the moon Europa orbiting neighboring Jupiter, Enceladus had suddenly become one of NASA's major candidates to find extraterrestrial life. What Cassini revealed in its first three flybys was so incredible that NASA scientists changed their focus and added 20 additional passes, even daring to pass right through the icy jet seven times. These passes were close enough to allow Cassini to use its cosmic dust analyzer to actually catch the emissions of the geysers and analyze those materials. This afforded NASA scientists the amazing opportunity to take a direct look at Cassini's oceans. Because unlike the Jovian moons that have subterranean oceans, Enceladus readily jets samples of its ocean into space. The samples revealed several gases within the geyser vapors, including carbon dioxide, methane, a little ammonia, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, and of course water. There were also salts and silica. But one of the most amazing things was the presence of organic materials in concentrations 20 times greater than scientists had expected. The presence and concentrations of these materials revealed the subterranean ocean of Enceladus to be active, 
a churning, frothing sea offering a rich concentration of compounds. Molecules consisting of two hydrogen atoms were also found. On Earth, such molecules are found in abundance around hydrothermal vents deep within the ocean. And this provides good evidence of hydrothermal vents on the floor of Enceladus oceans. While the icy shell of Enceladus oceans averages between 20 and 25 kilometers thick, near the South Pole it is likely only to be 1 to 5 kilometers thick. That's still quite deep. But, with a few advances in technology, Enceladus may well become a reasonable candidate for exploration of those subterranean oceans. In the meantime, the fact the little world jettisons literal samples of its oceans into space provides fantastic opportunities for study with the next mission to Saturn. The geysers of Enceladus emerge from cracks of the South Pole called tiger stripes. These are geologically active formations, perpetually pinched, pulled, and prodded by tidal forces created by the neighboring moon, Mimas, and their shape changes over time. It is these same tidal forces that generate substantial heats within Enceladus and give the oceans their warmth. As noted earlier, Enceladus is the most reflective object in the solar system. The fact that it reflects nearly all the solar energy that arrives to it also makes its surface one of the coldest places in the solar system, at nearly 200 degrees Celsius below zero. It is the fortunate positioning of Enceladus between the moons Mimas and Dion, portrayed here on the orbital map, that allows for the intense tidal forces that enable Enceladus to have so much heat. As with so many other moons, Enceladus is tidally locked with Saturn, and also, as with the Galilean moons of Jupiter, Enceladus is in an orbital resonance. It orbits twice for every single time that its neighboring moon, Dione, goes around Saturn. Assuming Enceladus is about 4.5 billion years old, and that it has maintained a steady loss of about 200 to 250 kilograms of material per second over all that time, Enceladus would have lost about 30% of its mass to space, though that may or may not account for gravitational recapture of dust particles. In any event, data indicates the moon likely began its life hot, gaining initial heat at its formation from radioactive isotopes of aluminum, iron, and manganese. Those early radioisotopes would have generated enormous heat for the first 7 million years of the world's existence, allowing for metals and rock to accumulate at the core of Enceladus. But the effect of those isotopes is fairly short-lived when considered against the age of our solar system. It is believed that Enceladus probably possesses longer-lived isotopes of uranium-238, 235, thorium, and potassium. But this, it is estimated, would only provide 0.3 gigawatts of power, not enough to adequately heat the little moon's oceans and keep them liquid. Tidal forces, we now know, make up the difference. And that's an interesting finding, because it would seem from Earth to Jupiter to Saturn, it is the interplay of moons that ultimately enable the environments conducive to life. Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story. Sky Story is part of the Understory Network, a collection of programs devoted to the study of the natural world. In MicroStory, we study the invisible world of the very small. In Understory, we examine natural history and issues of conservation. And in Sky Story, we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that like button.